This is Audible. Doombound by David Annandale. Performed by John Banks, Ken Bradshaw, Tim Bruce, Jonathan Keeble, and Luis Soto. His brother was calling. Liberator Erak Grimwatch heard the voice of Daras Sunblade, but it was too distant to matter, too uncertain in its reality. Brother, answer me! Daras? I can't see him. He was at my side a moment ago. I... Where am I? I was in Shadespire, wasn't I? Grimwatch had grown used to not being able to trust directions. A road he had taken could have vanished when he tried to find it again a few minutes later. Landmarks were treacherous, appearing solid one moment, dissolving mirages the next. Where was I in Shadespire? I don't know. Maybe that was long ago. There is sun here, hard sun, a wall! I can see the wall now. A different city, not Shadespire. I... Damn this fog in my head! Think, think you have a duty here, yes. Yes, defend this wall. Defend the city. I am a sentinel. He was not alone. There was a great army with him, lining the ramparts. He could not see the troops clearly. They were vague, lacking form, as if his vision were blurred. He could hear them and sense their valor, but could not make out their words. They were not his primary concern. He barely glanced at the troops. He stared out over an ill-defined terrain to the horizon. There was a stain there. A stain that moved. It troubled him and angered him, though he was not sure why. I should know what that is. I should know where I am. This is real. There, the stone under my boots. I can feel and hear it. All real. I belong here. Ah! But why? The city in the sun pulled at him with the merciless strength of a riptide. Yet it was incomplete. What? What do you want? Eric? Who is there? The rampart vanished. Sunlight. City and army shattered into sharp fragments that broke apart again and again until they were so much powdered glass. Then... They were nothing. He was in Shadespire again, on a narrow cobbled street that wound between twisting ruins of mirrors and stone. The light failed, turning back into the deep, mist-shrouded grey that passed for day in the city. What the ruins had once been, Grimwatch could not guess. They were not even shells. They were leaning fragments of curved walls, staircases that spiraled hundreds of feet up into the air, unmoored from any structure. On his right, high above a mass of jagged shards the size of temple spires, was a row of vaulted windows. They floated in mid-air, part of nothing and looking on to nothing. Did you see it? Did you see the wall? I saw nothing, except what was happening to you. What do you mean? I do not know how to describe it. You were... Fading. I was having a vision. It consumed me. That isn't what I meant. You seemed physically distant. As though something was drawing you away. I was standing right beside you, Eric. But until I clasped your shoulder, I wondered if my hand might pass through you. Maybe I was truly elsewhere. What did you see? The battlements of another city, during another war. Did you recognize it? I don't know. Unlike yours, my past has closed itself to me. Mine will too, in time. It is the price we pay for resurrection. One of the prices. Grimwatch spoke without regret or emotion. With each death in battle, with every reforging, he had lost more and more of his older self, 
and with it, his humanity. His existence was now defined only by the violence of battles. The time between each struggle was only the preparation for the next one. We should return. Ignore the lies of this cursed city. Our patrol is complete, and Liberator Prime Steelheart awaits our report. Agreed. But this was more than a hallucination. Those portions of it that were clear were too detailed. I could feel the heat of the sun. We should not ignore what has happened. He looked down the twist of the street and peered at the billowing mists of Shadespire, as if they might peel back, revealing another, more urgent reality beneath them. Not that wall ever again. Garrox's hatred needed blood and he lashed out. The blow was a good one. His spiked gauntlet punched through the gap in Rourke's visor and put out both the other blood warrior's eyes before he could react. Garrox swung his axe and finished the job, decapitating Rourke. Blood fountained over Garrox and the corpse thudded to the ground, to the amusement of the rest of the band. Baku clapped Garrox on the shoulder. <laughs> A nice quick offering for the Skull God, Gerox. Rauk must have been surprised. I thought he was preparing to put you out of your misery. Trances leave you vulnerable. Never again. Gerox turned from the body, facing Vakul and the three other blood warriors. They did not share my vision. They did not see the war. Or that sun. That cursed sun. Mock again, and I'll take all your skulls! Vakul hefted his axe. <laughs> you are welcome to try. Are you as skilled when the attack is not a surprise, I wonder? Garrox was about to lunge, but then he looked past Vakul and froze. Vakul saw the sudden shift in his attention and spun around. What do you see? I'm not sure. They were standing in the shadow of a network of crisscrossing bridges that linked the shells of high towers. Few of the spans were intact. Some were broken in the middle, while others ended at walls that were no longer there. Even in the deepening twilight, the bridges cast an interlocked pattern of shadows that seemed to create an angular tunnel of darkness. At the center of the tunnel, Gerox saw a portion of his vision. A vortex of fragments hinting at fortifications, and a blazing hated sun spun and retreated down the dark. It taunted and called. Do you attack me, Shadespire, with that vision? Am I so great a threat to you? Yes, I am. I will prove it. I see the mark of a retreating enemy. There is nothing there. Then remain here while I make all of the foe's blood mine. And mine the greatest offering. The way back was gone. Erak, we could not have come this way. Yet we did. We cannot go back. The Liberators had retraced their steps through many intersections as the sudden night of Shadespire fell. But now, where they should have been on a wide boulevard, a monstrous wall of glass blocked their way. It stretched as far as Grimwatch could see in either direction, cutting them off completely from the path to the encampment. I see no way around. We must find one. We must reach the other side. If there is still another side, Doubts do not become you. Grimwatch did not answer. Sunblade was right, but the doubts lingered. The shifting reality of Shadespire felt less insubstantial. They headed back to the previous intersection, but where it should have been, there was now a canyon. Fragments of shade glass dropped into the deep gulf, glittering dark rain. The cliffs were sheer, the bottom invisible. The gorge cut diagonally through the ruins. There was only one road left that was not cut by the gorge now. One that had not been present before. It was narrow, 
squeezing between towers shattered into the shape of jagged bone. Our path is chosen for us. I do not like being led by the nose. We have no choice. But if we are being led, let us find the enemy who leads and cut down the foe. If we... The wall again. The sun. He could see it much more clearly, its details etched by a burning sun. He could see, too, the troops he was standing alongside. They were mortals, all of them. There were no storm-cast Eternals to be seen. The men and women at arms looked to him for orders. Grimwatch looked down at his arms, and the plate he wore was common. It was polished, but pitted. His weapon was an ordinary broadsword. I am diminished. I am lesser. I am mortal. Again. No, not again. Always. I have always been mortal. I should know this. I should know who I am. Below the walls of the city, the enemy had come and the siege was beginning. Grimwatch did not know what walls these were, or the nature of his command. He did not know where he was, but he recognized the foe. The worshippers of Nurgle surged against the defenses. They were monsters of disease, their superating flesh bursting through in thick, rotten growths. The stench was overwhelming. A miasma that made the air waver and staggered the defenders. I could chew this air. There are too many! They will take the walls! Hold! Do not waver, comrades! This is the hour of our glory! Aaron! This is our city and our sacred charge. Let the enemy cover his filth and his squalor! I do not fear him! We will hurl these wretches down and burn them where they stand! Grimwatch raised his sword, and the defenders of the city rallied with him. Determination overtook fear on the wall, as the forces of chaos raised the first siege ladders and arrows rained down on the rot bringers. Erak! The reality of the sun-drenched city faded again. It did not disappear entirely, but it receded from Grimwatch's grasp. He was no longer on the wall. It was at some distance from him, and he had to get back to the top to stand with his troops. He could see Shadespire. Its sepulchral reality stained the bright vision of the wall. Grimwatch saw both locations at once. They overlapped with each other, one becoming dominant over the other, and then beginning to dissolve from one moment to the next. Sunblade was at his side, yet he seemed a thousand leagues distant. You are being deceived by illusions. Whatever you are seeing, it is not there. I know. But is anything truly real here? Shadespire was insubstantial as smoke, but as inescapable as war. It shifted, though never before his eyes. The change had already happened whenever he turned his head. And now, where there had been a street, there was a staircase. The steps climbed into thin air, but they also climbed the height of the dreamlike wall of the other city. Hundreds of feet up, the stairs ended in an archway. We are real. We are the certainty we must rely on. Come with me, Erak. We will find the way back to liberate a prime steel heart. You cannot see that wall? You are pointing at empty air. The archway at the top of those stairs, can you see it? Yes. It was not there a few moments ago. Can you see through it? It is difficult. From this distance, there seems to be light shining from it. That is sunlight, Darius. Sunlight from the other city. Grimwatch set foot on the first of the steps. What are you doing? I will see what there is to see. Perhaps from that height, the way back will be clear. Think this through, Erak. You see this vision, and I don't. Shadespire seeks to separate us. You are being lured. This is a trap. I know. Grimwatch hesitated, two steps up. He stared at the archway hovering in the midst of shadows and smoke, mirrors and fog. The pool was overwhelming. But there is a truth up there calling me. A truth I've lost. No. No, Taris is right. 
If there is a truth, it is in the heart of a trap. Turn back. Go back with him now. But Sunblade was no longer at three steps away. The street had fallen away, and Grimwatch now stood midway up the staircase. Fog swirled over the base of the stairs, hundreds of feet below. Sunblade was a vague figure, gesturing in limbo. Eric! You are being deceived! Do not believe what you see! Sunblade in the bottom of the stairs disappeared. Above, the sunlight of the other city blazed through the archway, a beacon in a world of grey. Their only way forward now was up the steps. Grimwatch was almost glad. He distrusted the call of the archway, but he had to answer it. He needed to recover the truth that waited for him there. He was being visited by the ghost of what he had been. A small portion of his mind was conscious of his diminished humanity. It was aware that he had become a being of armor and war, one who barely saw himself as in any way akin to the creatures he protected. That piece of his mind was awake now. It hungered for what had been lost. I want to remember, he cried. As he drew closer to the archway, the sun grew brighter. He could almost feel its heat beating against his armor. The war beyond called to him. There were warriors he must not abandon. He would lead them and crush the foul legions of Nurgle. He stepped through the archway. Grimwatch was on the rampart in mortal armor. The troops were rallying. The archers rained death on the Rotbringers and the siege towers were on fire. The struggle was fierce on the battlements. The Rotbringers were swarming up the wall on ladders and ropes. They covered the ground outside the city as far as the horizon, but the spirit of the defenders was undaunted. Grimwatch cut one of the diseased wretches down. Overripe, pustulant flesh spurted maggot-ridden slime over his face and chest as the Rotbringer fell. Uh, kill them all! Let this be their last day! See? My brother comes! Why did I say that? How do I know this? These words are familiar. Have I said them before? No. But I have heard them. I know I have. Grimwatch looked at the warrior he had called his brother. It was this man, and not Grimwatch, who was in overall command of the defense of the wall. He cut through the Rotbringers as though they were reeds. Their blows did nothing to slow his charge along the length of the wall. He did not flinch when one of the enemies smashed his helmet away. It was Grimwatch who flinched. He froze where he stood. The warrior who slaughtered the Rotbringers was him. This cannot be. Vertigo assailed him. His blood pounded in his head, and the battle became distant, though he was in the midst of it. That face is mine. That is me. But then, who am I? The other warrior came closer. The Rotbringers were falling back before him, and the struggle on the wall was turning in favor of the defenders. The man who bore Grimwatch's face grinned in fellowship. He raised his sword triumphantly. And then there was a flash of lightning, one that Grimwatch knew too well, and the warrior was gone. In the midst of battle and the moment when victory became a possibility, he disappeared, taken to Azir. The Rotbringers rejoiced and renewed their attack. Victory slipped away from Grimwatch's grasp, and in the midst of his confusion he felt a rage so great he must surely crush the world with his bare hands. It blinded him with visions of red and brass. The wall was gone. The sun was gone. Grimwatch was in Shadespire again. Beyond the archway was a circular mirrored platform of shade glass. He stood near its edge, suspended high above the broken spires below. Facing him was a blood warrior of corn. His crimson armor was coated in dried blood. The scarred features beneath the snarling skull of a helmet were barely human, but Grimwatch recognized them. He knew they had been his only a few moments before. Gerox. <laughs> uh, 
Barak. They stared at each other, stunned by the receding wave of visions. The truth Grimwatch had found was only partially his. He had witnessed his own elevation through the eyes of the warrior he had once fought beside. Those were your memories? Do you have none of your own of our city before its fall? Did you forget so easily? We were defeated? Liberator and Blood Warrior moved steadily toward the center of the platform. Sigmarite Warhammer and Gorax at the ready. We were overwhelmed! We were annihilated! You vanished and they destroyed everything! Everything! Everyone! But Korn gave me vengeance! You betrayed everything! All that we stood for! You betrayed everything we fought for! I come for your justice now! They rushed each other. They smashed their weapons against each other in fury. At the moment they met, the platform exploded. Grimwatch fell. Yet there was no ground to see. His warhammer shattered Garrox's skull, yet the Blood Warrior was before him, unscathed. The Gorax was deep in Grimwatch's chest, yet there was no blood. The world broke into a million splinters. A storm of shattered reflections surrounded him, and in them were pieces of Shadespire and his past. There were fragments of his elevation, cruelly juxtaposed with the cataclysm that had befallen his mortal comrades. There were the sharp jabs of each death since, each hollowing out of the human he had been. There were shards of violence and horror that were not Grimwatch's memories. They were Gerox's. They had become the only thing he knew after the disaster, and the only thing he valued. But there was nothing whole. There was only a single thing that retained coherence in Grimwatch's sight. And that was Gerox. Grimwatch lunged through the swirling mosaic to smash at his former brother. They were doom-bound together. Grimwatch knew there would be no more reforging for him, and there would be no more memories. There would be no return to the ramparts. There would only be the hate and the loss that had been born on that day. There would only be this battle, forever, and an eternity of broken glass. A Place of Reflection by David Geimer Performed by John Banks, Tim Bruce, Steve Conlin, Cliff Chapman, Melvin Rawlinson and Andrew Wincott Trogoth crushed my skull. Every Stormcast Eternal had their own way of marking time. Every third step, Diablos tapped the shoulder of his axe on the mirrored walls of the passageways, like Duardin cogwork. Mephistos hummed the chorus part of a dirge. Reciting his past experiences with death was Moribus. The Diamond Citadel, that was the second. Arrow to the back, I never saw it coming. The ruins of Shadespire had no day. They had no night. Marking time's passage was like counting one's breaths, utterly meaningless, until one began to feel them slipping away. The litany helped. It reminded Moribus that he was here for a reason, and that there had been a time before time had stopped. 
A labyrinth of mirrored glass stretched away from Moribus in every direction. Most of the panes were broken, deliberately by the look of them, as if some other lost soul had sought to leave a trail for himself through the maze. The images they held were of a darkness that bore little reflection to the cursed city that Moribus could see. Smoke, or some cursed ethia that resembled it, boiled silently against the inner glass. He extended a gauntlet towards the nearest pane, as if to touch it, but held his fingers well back from the surface. Shade glass. He waved his hand slowly over the inky glass, but Decimator Moribus of the Sons of Malice cast no reflection. Greenfire Gates, the second battle, pulled down by a Zangor horde. That was the... the third time. That was the third time. He looked over his shoulder, his gaze chasing half-made images from the wall of mirrors. The urge to shudder was well buried, but it worked its way out through his fingertips, gauntlets tightening over the long haft of his thunder axe. A fall from the Starbridge of Cyprium, the fourth time. Keep looking. We will find him. He is near. I'm sure of it. The Sons of Malice were practically ghosts, so perfectly suited to this undying realm were they. Their armor was the black of the midnight face of Daroth, the Dark Moon. The only breath of color to escape them was the amethyst of their shields and skybolt bows. How long have we been searching through this place? Wait, 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 wait. Did you hear that? Hear that? Hear that? Moribus raised his thunder axe, bidding its sigmarite blade to brighten. <coughs> Lightning flashed and flickered, peeling back the darkness that encircled him, but winning nothing from the shade glass. Whatever his brother had heard, he could not see. Verisades lurks somewhere within this maze of mirrors. We will find the accursed malignant and take the shade glass reliquary that he has claimed for it. I, I cannot remember. The fifth time. The, the fifth time was the last. It, it was... It was... A glimmer of reflection along one of the spiral walls up ahead caught his eye. A faint green glow, there and gone again, before Moribus had a chance to look at it more closely. To me, brothers! The Malignant is before us at last! Heart pounding, he charged through the spiraling passageways of vandalized shade glass. Snatched glimpses of his brothers came and went down branching passageways, sometimes near, sometimes far, but always running. He slowed to a clattering halt as he approached the mirror in which he had caught the shade's reflection. He had been too long in this maze to let the pain out of his sight, and the fracture patterns in the glass was as distinctive as the markings on a warrior's armor. Allowing his thunder axe to drop into a one-handed grip, he extended his gauntlet to the center of the shatter pattern. The fifth time? Sigma, what was the fifth time? He shook his head, backing warily away from the mirror. Did you see him? I do not know. Be wary, my brothers! He is in here somewhere. The dark ether that clung to the inside of the mirror began to draw away, as though sucked back into the nether space by whatever pocket deity ruled therein. Moribus felt his gaze drawn with it, the breath catching in his chest as a face that was not his own rose out of the sinking cloud. The skin had shrunk from the spirit's face to unmask the appalling visage of a human skull. Lank strands of dark hair fluttered on an ill wind felt upon no mortal realm, while eyes that burned with witchfire stared through the glaze and branded him damned. The shadows of undeath from which the spirit emerged began to change also, swelling into the semblance of a stormcast eternal in armor of amethyst and black, a hateful spirit hovering by his shoulder. For the God King! Moribus struck out backhanded with his thunder axe at full extension. The weapon's tremendous weight almost dragged him off balance, fury warring with embarrassment as the passageway behind him turned out to be empty. I am Moribus of the Sons of Malice, a vessel of the Divine Storm. You will not disarm me with... A pair of arms wrapped under his and clamped tight around his breastplate. They were without substance. Their color was that of his armor, black, the clothing that covered them tatty and ethereal. 
He gasped as the death chill permeated thrice blessed Sigmarite and crystallized around his beating heart. Field! Sigmar's wrath! The spirit's corpus and flesh appeared by his shoulder, just as Moribus had seen it, the stench of the grave penetrating his unyielding mask and filling his nose and mouth. You are lost, immortal! Coils of smoke billowed from the surrounding mirrors as Moribus struggled against the spirit's grip, pouring upwards as if in the ragged casts of men. Faceless, featureless, fleshless. Their insubstantial bodies glowed from within with a watery amethyst light. Where is your man god now? Dantus! Diablos! To me, my brothers! He will never find you! He is here! So, very sad is nothing! We are nowhere! Ah! Why do you even struggle? What is all your strength worth here? Even here, Sigmar's strength will eclipse all. Your brethren search only because they know not what else to do. They search because they are as lost as you. Ignoring the spirit on his back, Moribus launched himself into the emerging hosts. The first malignant exploded from the touch of Moribus's axe, whatever dark matter bound such spirits to their forms, blasting free in tatters. The rest of the host scattered like mist before a storm wind, and Moribus clamped his weapon's long haft in a reverse grip and swung back. Feel the might of the God King! It was not like murdering the living. There was no resistance to his blows, and his wide scything arcs tore a vaporous hole into the malignant host. <laughs> what good it does you? You are still lost! Moribus slammed back into the mirror behind him. I am here, brothers! Call out to me! I will find you! He spun, a crashing upswing returning three more spirits to their shallow grave. Before the host could resubstantiate, their tattered essence left a fog through which Moribus saw what he knew in his soul was no reflection. Verisardis! The hex wraith was clad in a harness of ethereal green plates, its heraldry murky, as though restored from a memory that grew dimmer with the passing centuries. The scythe it wielded flickered in and out of view, the cruel curb of its blade wreathed in witchfire. Its eyes burned green and cold, and it was a miracle that any human skull could contain such loathing and not be consumed. Varisades! Cutting a path with great sweeps of his axe, Moribus sighted the Hexwraith just as it disappeared onto another passage. The maze branched and branched again, and Moribus plunged deeper into it, heedless of where he was going or how he meant to find his way back. Every so often, the hex wraith would rise up out of a pane of glass, silent and imperious, the reflection stretching to two or three times Moribus's height, only to recede back into nothingness long before his pounding footfalls drew close. He can pass through the mirrors. A near endless maze is no place for an immortal. Do not let him get away, brothers! lest we be forced to pursue this malignant through his labyrinth for a thousand years until madness and death return us to Sigmar's anvil. <laughs> the fifth time, the, the, the fifth time was... The fifth time... He spun as he ran, lashing at the pursuing spirit host. His thunder axe detonated in their midst, flinging their cursed ether into the air and causing the watching mirrors to split before the thunderous wave. Why can I not remember the fifth time? Back! He lifted his axe in defiance, its actinic flicker casting the darkness aside. Come, feast upon the storm eternal, Varisades. Or do you fear even to face an emissary of the god of men? Blinking away the afterimages of shrinking ghosts, he lowered his axe, almost crying out in surprise as Nightquester Dantus darted across him. Father Malice! 
All thought of Varisades and his artifact were expelled from Moribus's mind as he charged after the disappearing Knight Quester. Dantus! Brother! Stop! We, we cannot be separated! He knew this with a certainty that was almost terrifying in its faith. The passage fell away to reveal the heart of the labyrinth. Moribus felt the pressure of his confinement lifted as he looked up into the gaping wound of empty sky. Frayed strips of cloud raced by, as if in terror, run to rags across the bones of the great buildings that reared towards the night. I remember passing an old temple to Nagash, but I do not recognize any of these. Sigma, where have you led me? Clutching his axe to his chest, Moribus walked into the plaza. A ring of large mirrors encircled him. Each was tilted backwards to present a reflection of the clouds. They glowed faintly, silvery white, as if catching the luster of a moon that was no longer there, and bathed the space in an unearthly light. Of Dantus or his brothers, however, of Varisades or his minions, or of anything indicating an escape from this labyrinth, there was no sign at all. Moribus sank to his knees. Where are you, Sigma? He tilted his head back to stare into the denuded heavens, for surely Sigma's power overruled that of Nagash. Surely, even here, the God King could still deliver a sign. Tell me what I must do! He drew the lightning bolt sharpness of his axe blade to the crest of metal where his high gorget met his spike-crowned mask. He held the blade steady. Must I cut my own throat to be free of this maze and fight for you again? Azerite energies arcing across his helmet and pauldron, staring at the sky, waiting. Then, with trembling hands, he cast the weapon from him with a cry. <coughs> Falling onto hands and knees, he stared at the ground. A memory that he could not quite place stirred in his thoughts. The fifth time. The clouds in the high mirror before him were racing away, tearing back from the towering likeness of Nightquester Dantus. His armor was golden, the griff hair plume spilling from his helmet emerald in color, for the Nightquester was forged from a different striking to the Sons of Malice. The fists of Sigmarite, first always unto glory. Sigmaron. The Divine City. I remember. From the fourth time, the fourth... Falling from the Cyprium Star Bridge in Shimon. Moribus recalled the place from his last reforging. His storm host had pushed on without him, and Nightquester Dantus had summoned him here to the ether domes that studded the outer ring of the Sigma Abulum, to stare into heaven's abyss and hear of Sigmar's will for Moribus of the Sons of Malus. The process of reforging is a flawed one. You know this. Sigma knows this. Each death damages us further. Nightquester Dantus reached towards the intervening glass, as if to take a brother's shoulder and share his confidence. There is a city, brother. A cursed city where the wizard kings of myth mastered the art of capturing souls intact. It is a secret that Sigma and his six smiths would take for themselves, whatever the cost. Whatever the cost. Rising on raw anger, Moribus hammered his axe blade through Nightquest Adantus' reflection. Wrenching his axe free, he staggered back, looking up in slowly dawning horror. No. No, it cannot be. The mirror now looked exactly the same as every other broken pane he had passed on his journey through the labyrinth. Hundreds upon hundreds of sheets of glass, all of them shattered under the thunderstrike of an axe. It was me! I shattered them! The memory that had earlier begun to stir came now to maturity. The fifth time trapped you. Moribus spun on the spot, suddenly unsteady on his feet, clutching his thunder axe tight to his chest. The hex wraith stood behind him. The wind sighed through ethereal bones, his scythe guttering like a torch in a dark place. He made no move, silent but for the lingering trace of his initial utterance. Moribus glowered. Am I 
dead. Barisades gave no answer. Every Stormcast Eternal that came to the Shade Spire has heard the stories of warriors, of whole cohorts disappearing without trace, never to return to the soul forges of Sigmaron. Ghost stories! Drawn by an impulse, he looked again to the Ring of Mirrors. In place of harried night clouds, he saw his brothers. Diabolus, Mephistos, Dantus. Keep looking. We will find him. Moribus turned back to Varisades. The Hexwraith returned his regard with a desolate stare of his own, and Moribus wondered if he and Varisades were the only real things he had seen here. Could he even say that much? They are not looking for you. They are looking for me. With that realization, the world lurched. Moribus fixed it in his mind the only way he knew how. He tightened his grip on his axe and took a step forward. I am a Stormcast Eternal. I will face any foe, anywhere, and with a prayer of thanks on my lips. Ancient joints clicked as the Hexwraith idly swung his scythe. Ghost plate emitted a muted clank. Sigma! Moribus broke into a charge, but had barely moved when the air before him shattered. The Hexwraith disintegrated. Shards of armor and pale bone, strips of cloud, crumbling spires, glass, stone, all of it, the whole world falling, falling, falling. A labyrinth of mirrored glass stretched away from Moribus in every direction. Most of the panes were broken, deliberately by the look of them, as if some other lost soul had sought to leave a trail for himself through the maze. Hammerfall my first, a brass trogloth crushed my skull, diamond citadel my second, arrow to the back, green fire gates my third, pulled down by a Zangor horde, and my fourth... My... My... Fourth... Sigma, why can I not remember the fourth time? Keep looking. We will find him. Come, brothers. He is in here somewhere. The Autumn Prince by Guy Haley Performed by John Banks, Tim Bruce, Beth Chalmers, Steve Conlin, Melvin Rawlinson and Luis Soto Light! The rat can infest these tunnels! Men, look to your backs! For everyone we kill, there are two in the shadows! Prince Mesa, look out! Above you! Ah. Ah. Help me! You should not have come here today, child of chaos! No, no, you die, fool thing! Bring stick to fight! Ha ha, you dead! This is the Song of Thorns! If it pricks you, then you die! Forever! Well done, my lord. They didn't like that. They're running. Cut them down. Hold your ground. 
They'll slit your throats the moment you're away from the lamplight. Keep your guard up. They'll be back. Prince Mesa, what was that weapon? A wooden sword? Not wood, as you saw. A blade of living thorn. You heard me name it. Pray I have no cause to do so again. The weapon was Alariel's gift to my clan. Rather than water, it thirsts for souls. To draw it again in your presence will seal your doom. I cannot stay it. It will pierce your skin and drink your spirit. Then I shall not ask of it again. You are wise. Wise? Me? It is strange to hear an elf speak of a man so. Men can be wise, as elves can be humble. A rarity, then. I am not wise, no. Greedy and eager to live, that I am. I pledge to bring you to the Duskgate. We are there. We go no further. Pay me and go. This wall of rock is the Duskgate. It does not look like much but it is the gate to the walls of Shadespire. A secret way, long lost, that should never have been found. It will take you to the remains of one of the great towers. Here is the key. There is power in this diamond. Aye, and when you've used it, you can keep it. I'm never passing through that gate again, riches or not. You'll run your own from here on out. Then take your gold. I trust it will be enough for your services. Fair exchange for that diamond? Not likely. That's a king's fortune right there in your fist. I have no more, Captain. The sum is what we agreed. I never said I wanted more. Your purse is more than a fair price for my life. I thought to make my fortune from the discovery of this gate. I've learned my lesson. There's only death beyond that door. I'll take this modest tally. You keep the diamond and the secret of the gate. May knowledge of both be lost when you die. And you will die. With your passing, no more glory seekers will go to their deaths on my account. And I'll be poor, but safe. This gold of yours will buy enough wine to drown out my memories of that dead city for a while. A good fortune to you, Prince Mesa. May you find whatever you are looking for in that awful place. Oh no, I did not. Men! To your fate! Weapons drawn! It's a long walk back to the surface, and the rat spawn will be watching. We are alone, Shattercap. You may come forth. Take your place on my shoulder. Tell me what you see. I perceive nothing, a oh, wicked prince. Wicked I am not, Spite. To keep a mischief such as you, prisoner, is a kindness to all those your antics would pain. Now, tell me what you see. I command you. I said I see nothing. You lie, small evil. The gates of the Shadow Rites are well disguised, but they are never invisible, especially not to one such as you. An elf wanderer knows where there is a way, and there is one here. See, here is the lock, disguised as a fissure in the rock. The stone opens. The way is clear. Ah, do not pinch so hard. Curb your fear. Oh, oh please, master. I will not go there. I will not go to the lands of glass and shadow. Let me free, I beg thee. Kind prince, good prince. I am kind, and so I will not set you free. You would die in this city of men, away from the life-giving magics of Gairan. Take me where I need to go, and tell me what I must know. Then I shall return you to some pretty forest, far from good folk you might harm. This I swear on the nine paths of my ancestors. <laughs> I cannot if I perish here. It is a better place than whither thou wouldst go. Oh, let me loose, I beg of thee. The gate field quivers. 
Something is coming! The remains of the damned, they spill from the Shadowlands! Oh, please turn back and free me from my unkind bondage! I have purpose there. Be silent! You cannot bring her back. I can. And I will. You remain my servant until I do. The secret to cheating death lies in the Shadespire, and you will help me find it. So many fires outside the wall. The desert smells of bone and death. But elf, dwarven, human and greenskin, all are there. Why do they come here? Do they know not the danger? They know the danger's all right, little evil. They come to pillage the city for shade glass. Sigmar's war demands mighty weapons. Many secrets are buried in this place. For these souls, power and money are more important than life. Uh, power and money are not what thou seek. No, they are not. The captain was not so clever. Think how much those outside would give to gain entrance to the wall's walk as we have. He would have been mighty rich. Think how many would have died. Only a few who venture into this place re-emerge. For him, the weight of gold was not so heavy as the burden of a guilty conscience. Does that mean he was a good man? He was unusually good. He would not condemn others to this half-place. Look to the inner wards of the city, where there are no fires but only darkness reflected in the glass. It is trapped between two worlds, a fell reflection of itself. If thou wishest to go within, then I say thou art not good. I am neither good nor bad, little mischief. I am merely desperate, and that puts me beyond issues of morality. There, the great tower at the heart of the ruins. Within are the domains of the Cataphranes. It is the chamber of Cataphrane Thanaton we must seek. He holds the answer to the riddle of death. I like this not. Not one bit at all. There are shades moving in the glass. Is every street the same? The dead who did not die, cursed by Nagash. They are everywhere in the city. Ignore them. They can do you no harm. More! All in the glass! So many! I said they cannot hurt you. See this woman in the glass. So beautiful. So tortured. She is dead, but cannot escape this life. Please, please, please. I must go to the market to fetch some bread. Our children will come home soon. They will be hungry, so hungry after that day with the scholar. Please, I must go. I need to feed my boys. A tragedy. She is caught at the moment of the city's death. If she could get out, she would not harm you. They suffer. They desire to end their pain, that is all. It is sad. Hey, go! I, I see something else on the glass. A skull, blowing eyes. It is a great evil. Nagash himself. He watches this place still. He is jealous of his soul tithe. We should not attract his attention. No, my master. Not with what thou wishest to do. Do not speak of it so close to our destination. We must keep to the shadows and avoid the need to fight. Such ruin. Such desolation. And yet, beneath the bone dust, there are treasures aplenty. 
See, here are the jewels of emperors. And the clockwork wonders of the Duwadin. There is magic in these pictures, and art of a rough kind in the human's masonry. Even in the chandeliers that ring so mournfully. These are the personal chambers of the cataphrane Thanaton, a ruler of great power. Think of how they must have been in the days before. Ever must the glorious be lost to the jealousies of evil. Take his treasures, let us be rich. They do not interest me. Does death interest thee? There are bones everywhere. There is danger here. We should leave, good master. I miss the forests. Please take me home. So you might steal mortal children to raise as your own and gnaw upon the bones of innocent wayfarers. I knew no better. I promise to be good. Then learn. Atone for your sins in service to me, and you may return to your beloved woods. Alariel will judge you kindly for your help. That is our bargain. As the book said, these are the mirrors of Thanaton. His essence hides in but one of them. Use your sight. Tell me which contains the soul of the cataphrane. Warn me which are traps. Are you sure this is the right place? The right tower? You know it is the place. Cease your diversions. Find cataphrane Thanaton. Reveal his hiding place to me. It is not that mirror. Break it and foil its traps. Not that. That's not it either. Something moves within the glass here. I see a face. Are you sure I will not destroy that which I seek? It is a trap, the home of a hungry spirit. Destroy it before the shade within comes forth. Five remain. Which is it? This one? No. He is coming. Stop! Stop! There he is, in the middle glass there. The cracked mirror? That is the one of my prince. His form gathers. There is magic on the air. Then call to him. It is done. I see him. He has kept his face and form during his time in the glass. Remarkable. Stay away from the shade, my lord. He is too strong. Oh, would we have stayed in the realm of light? But thou wouldst not listen to poor, poor Shattercap. Who are you? Why do you come here to destroy what little remains of the Faneway? You break the last of the ancient wonders in your ignorance! I know what I do. I seek the wisdom of the Cataphrane Thanaton. You are he. Why do you seek Thanaton? I hear his knowledge might be bought for the right price. That it might. That it might. Come closer. Be wary. It is too late for that, Shattercap. I see you now. Announce yourself, Elf Lord. I am Prince Mesa of the Heartfelt Glades. Last of my house. Outcast Wanderer. I come to you with a great need. What do you see? Here, in this package, is all I have loved, and everything I have lost. Then show me. A female skull. It is human. A matter of the heart. As I said. <laughs> is this not a transgression for your kind? To love outside your own race? My crimes are my own. They are not relevant to the service I require. If you will not tell me, Elf Prince, I cannot help. Yes, then. It was transgression. One that cost me my house and my family. 
My kind do not look well upon humanity, but I could no easier give up breathing than not love Elamar. I saw her five centuries ago at the edge of our holdings. I should have killed her, as our custom demands, but my heart was captured. I loved her instantly. As you say, joining with those of foreign kindreds is forbidden by our law. We ran and carved a little joy from the horrors of this age. But the spans of my kind and hers are cruelly mismatched, and it was done too soon. She wasted to decrepitude, while I remained young. I wish to return her from the Underworlds, for one lifetime of her love can never be enough. In all the many lands of the All Eight Realms, there is but one place I know where death might be defied. Here, in the fabled city of Shadespire. <laughs> you are delayed by a thousand years. Nagash determined that our art was not to his liking, and he destroyed our city for our offense against his dominion. You still live, nevertheless. Power remains in Shadespire. Help me! The Lord of Death demanded that her soul go to the underworld of her people, and mine will go to that of the Elves. We shall never be together again. You must help me. I know you can. Your name I uncovered in a book, lost in the stacks of a forgotten library. Many tomes of forbidden lore were contained there. None were more greatly warded than the book that spoke of you. A book survived that recorded the existence of Shadespire. And all of its wonders. Then its wards must have been very strong if they held away Nagash. The Lord of Death will curse any who have any truck with we of Shadespire. Such was his wrath. Those who come here to pillage our treasures will learn this soon enough, for his curse lies upon all things in the city. You will bring his fury upon yourself simply by speaking of these things, by being here. If it gets me what I want, then I do not care whose enmity is raised against me. I shall defy death itself if I must. Then bring your love closer. We'll see what I might do. That's right, closer still. Yes, yes, I can see her. Put her up against the glass. Some of her essence clings yet to the skull. Still, it will be difficult to bring her fully back from the underworlds. But not impossible? Not impossible. I warn you, this half-life I have is not to everyone's liking. When the gush came upon our land, we expected death. And oh, how we feared it. He had worse in mind. We were not released, you see. But trapped between the worlds of life and death, as this city is trapped between the realms of light and shadow. Many of my countrymen have gone mad in during it. Some have turned to Nagash's worship. Many are trapped in the glass of the city, doomed to relive the moment of our doom. Worse are those whose mortal bodies decayed around them, but their souls cannot leave, but remain imprisoned in cells fashioned from their own ribs and skulls. They walk the land, neither alive nor dead, and raging against their fate, would you risk that? Our love will keep us sane. I ask that you bring her back. And what will I gain in return? I have nothing but an offer of service. Bring my love, Ella Ma, back to me, and I shall serve you faithfully. You will do what I ask, without question. I will. Anything. And your strange companion? The forest spite is bound to me until it unlearns wickedness. It, too, shall serve until its gaze is lifted. Then you must come within the mirrors with your beloved head, Elf Prince. Do it not, my prince, for the good thou hast taught me. Do not leave me here alone. You must come nearer, if you will have your desire. I can work no magic while you are distant from my mirror. You must join me in the heart of the Shadow Realms. Very well. How may it be done? Take up a shard, 
that black glass there. A dagger shape. That will do nicely. Hold the point toward your heart, like so. Now, drive it into your breast. But <laughs> master, no! <laughs> Open your eyes, my love. Elamar? Is that you? Where... where am I? Do you not see the dark deeps of the mirror? This is the shade glass. It is a substance that captures souls, much like the Song of Thorns. I am not dead. Nothing dies here. Nothing can. And that is the greatest thing of all. You are here with me, and we shall be together. Oh, thanks be to all the gods of this and all worlds. That is not so, my love. I cannot leave the underworld this way. My shade can remain for but a few moments. See, my phantasmal body fades, revealing the skull beneath my face again. There is little magic here that can return my life, and none at all to return my youth. I am a hag turning into a horror, and I will soon be gone. You are as beautiful to me as you ever were. The underworld calls to me. You have been tricked, my love. Look behind you, back through the mirror. Thanaton, where's your body? His soul has escaped its prison. You are doomed. I apologize, little princeling. You have offered me a way out and I have taken it. Maybe one day he will find your own escape. In the meantime, I thank you for this ageless body. Such grace your people have. I shall be sure to enjoy it. You shall suffer for your treachery. I think not. Cease your beating. It is no use. You cannot escape. You must bide your time until another fool comes along and you may do as I did. Until that day, I bid you farewell. Thou wool, my master, evil shade. I will not let him perish. Quickly, my prince! Out of the glass! Out! 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 Silence! <laughs> my prince, thou yet bear the dark reflection of the Song of Thorns. Use it upon the weakness in the glass. Soul thirst against soul thirst. The magic of the elves is far greater than that of men. My master, he escaped! Stop! Cease your advance. If you kill me, you slay your own body. You would not kill yourself! You misunderstand the power of this blade. The Song of Thorns is a soul thief. One scratch ah! is sufficient. Quickly, good prince, thou fades. Pack into thy body before the glass draws you back in. How? Go within, as a sleeper returns for the realms of dreams and awakens, yes? Quickly, while there is still life in thy body. <coughs> Thou livest! Elamar, where is she? Where? Where is her skull? I see it. Here she is. Thy lovely skull. Do not dare to lay your hands upon her, Spite. Why must thou be so cruel? Poor Shattercup means no harm. See? In the glass, her shade is yet to leave. My love, my prince, my love, my prince. Elomar, I will not rest until I find a way to free you from death's realm. We will be together again. Lisa. She has gone. I will find a way to bring her back. I will. Fetch me her wrappings so I may protect her remains until the day comes. I will let you touch those at least. You could have betrayed me. I could. I did not. You... Did not. Does that mean I learn, my prince? You learn. We are going. I will seek the solution elsewhere. 
Let us leave Shadespire to the looters. There is nothing here for us. Thou will not release me? Though I was good beyond thy nature? Not yet, Shadow. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this program.